Hello everyone, uh, my name is Robert, I'm a personal trainer, uh, I'm currently in self-isolation, uh, I've been for just over, just over a week, uh, I managed to go out and exercise, um, so I've been going in the parks but I've been going late at night, so today's the 22nd of March, uh, it's Sunday, uh, so I've just been training, it was 11pm, I was going to do a video outdoors, but I didn't really want to encourage people to go outdoors, especially today that Boris Johnson has told us the fresh air is not necessarily good for you so I think it's all airborne so I decided to do it indoors but I've just been training outdoors which I have been for like the last the last like 10, 10 days or so uh, also I did come across quite a few like unsavory characters in the parks as well you know out late just looking like they were up to up to no good, looking very ominous, you know. So uh, it's not something really I'm gonna recommend at this time. But what I thought I'd do is uh, just show you basically how to warm up correctly. Uh, so we'll do some dynamic stretching, which is basically just movement stretching, which warms up your muscles, it oils your joints, like sort of lubricates your joints. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize about warm up is that it's supposed to gradually increase. Like I see a lot of people doing warm ups and they'll like start exercising and just stay, stay on that level. Now the idea with a warm up is to start low and each minute raise the intensity, which will like increase your heart rate, increase your breath, and prepare yourself better for what's for what's to come, the training to come. So because we're indoors, the warm ups, uh, there's various things you can do. I was going to suggest skipping, but like I'm in an apartment, so downstairs. <laughs> If I'm skipping, I mean, it's it's 11 p.m. at night, it's gonna cause a lot of noise. So there are lots of other ways. Um, but what I'll do, I'll give you, I'll finish this introduction, I'll go through the warm up, and I'll do a voiceover on it, just to give you some guidelines. Um, before we start as well, two good tips, two really, really good tips that I should, I should give you, is endeavor not to hold your breath when you're exercising, right? Because it can be harmful. And it, it, we are habitual, and when we're training, we're creating new behavioural patterns, so it's something to avoid, uh, because it does increase blood pressure uh, in people 35 and above, maybe even, even less. It can cause strokes if they're doing the high-intensity training. So what I just said to people, always keep an airflow. Don't hold it, especially when it's getting difficult. Sometimes don't hold your breath. Uh, and the other pearl of wisdom, which I was given from an Olympic coach, is never allow the movement to control you always control the movement and this it pays dividends when it comes to injury because if you're always in control if you're always controlling the movement your risk of injury is minimal uh, in the past i've seen people and me myself it's happened to me as well where when you're getting tired uh, you let you start to let the movement control you and this is when you start to get injured this is when my injuries have happened, you know, like the last repetitions um, and I've dislocated a shoulder and all this sort of, so it really, really is worth like trying to, trying to, trying to visualise what that means. So you're, even when you're tired, even when you're really fatigued, you're still always going to control that movement. So it's a very, very important thing. Right, so you warm up, it should really be about four to five minutes. Like I said, start off with a low intensity and then gradually increase it. Um, depending on your fitness level, depending on your fitness level, depend on how you do these exercises, because there's always a tamer version and a more high intensity version. For example, high knees is good because we're indoors. So high knees. Right, it's really good to get you warmed up. However, if you're not feeling that you're capable of that or you find it difficult because it is, it is quite a difficult exercise to keep going, you can just walk, do a walk, yeah? And then, this is like a Muay Thai movement, you can move your hands into your knee if you're feeling a bit more. So I'd say, do that for a few minutes. Like I say, if that's a bit too difficult, you can slow it down and then do your walk. Yeah. Then after that, we can do star jumps. Do that for a minute or so. Increase the tempo. 
Then another one, left right boxing. And like I say, you can increase the temp tempo, so faster. Then two Muay Thai kicks, you can do that faster. And finish with your fast star jumps. Right, so do that for about five minutes. Right, now so we're all warmed up. We're going to do, it's a continuation of the warm up, but it's called dynamic stretching. So you're actually, you're going to do movement stretches, um, which will increase the heart rate. It will, it will keep, keep it up there or even increase it. Uh, lengthen the muscles, just warm up your body, ready for the main body of your exercise. So I'll go through this. Uh, so if you watch what I do, and then I'll do a voiceover to the video afterwards. So, right, here we go. Right, so, you want to uh, look straight ahead. You want your core incorporated, high elbows, reach out, pull back. And this will do your stabilizing muscles on your shoulder blades. It's good for posture, actually. Right, this one, it's a spinal twist. So, tight core. Don't overstretch, don't over-rotate. You know, just do what's comfortable, and you're basically, the muscles surrounding you, your spine, uh, your stabilising muscles, like your multifidus and stuff, you're just warming them up, you're just warming them up. Right, this one, uh, a lot of people might, might not be able to do this, so all I'd say is do one at a time. So put one arm across your chest, and just swing one arm, controlled of course, forward, swing it backwards. If you can do it together like this, it's really good, it uh, just shows you've got some coordination. Um, a lot of athletes use this, a lot of uh, like martial artists, uh, but if not, don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. Right, these are just like basic bum kicks, so tight core, try and look straight ahead because it will give you a, a neutral spine, which is what we're after, nice tight core, um, you're going to look at doing like 20 of them, so that's one, two, you know, you can't alternate. Uh, this is a side leg swing for your hip adductors, abductors, uh, same again, it's easy just to let your legs swing but really what you want to do is control it all the way through, tight core and do 10, do 10 on each leg, I don't think I did, I was just like going through the motions just trying to show, show you, um, but yeah uh, you have to Really be careful not to allow it to swing, so you're always controlling that movement. You're always controlling it. Um, next one. Right, some of you may be able to do this. So when you step back, you're stretching your calf. Then when you swing your leg forward, it's stretching your hamstrings. So you do 10 on each leg. If you can't do that with a balance, because it does take some core balance, if you can't do that, you can just step backwards like that and then straight back without a kick so you're just stepping backwards just step backwards and then go to the wall and do your front kicks uh, while supporting yourself on the wall so you just split the movement into two you just split it into two if you can't do the balancing I mean I wobbled a bit there <laughs> yeah. right and that's it for that that's it for that one right so now you're all warmed up you're all stretched your muscles are ready to go your heart rate's increased, you're all, you're all warm, Every, everything's, uh, everything's in gear, ready for the main body of your exercise. So I'll keep it really short and sweet, uh, we'll do some squats, we'll do some lunges, and we'll do a little bit of core after. So keep it nice and short, nice and sweet. Uh, the thing with your core muscles, which is all this barrel of muscle here, which stabilises your body really, these are the most important ones. Yeah? You've got a big barrel here, big barrel of muscle and this is your core. Now whenever you're doing any sort of exercising, even just walking, you want to have this switched on. So not really tense, not really, but switched on. So it's supporting your spine and keeping you stable. So it's very important to keep the core incorporated throughout just about everything you do. You can even do it when you're sat in a chair, sat at work at an office, um, when you go back to work that is. Um, you can have your, your core switched on slightly and it keep your core stable, uh, your spine stable, and it will continue to condition these muscles because they're very easily neglected. And this is why a lot of people have like really bad back pain. 
So I'll show you a basic squat. Um, the best way to find a stance for a squat is to simply jump in the air and where your feet land, that's your natural position. So there, so naturally where you'll land, that's your natural squat position. Flatten your core, look straight ahead. I put my arms on my shoulders here. Flatten your core, let gravity sink you down. It's so about parallel, back up and push. I'll do it from the side so you can see the side movement. So look straight ahead, let gravity take you down, keep your core tight, push up, in. So we'll do 10. So squat is one of the best exercises. It's one of my favourites. You have to be very careful with it. But learn technique first, obviously before you use any sort of weights. Um, and just be very careful, don't hold your breath. Uh, and I'll show you a lunge. So step forward, a couple of feet. Keep your core nice and tight, look straight ahead. Back knee down, push back up, opposite leg. Look straight ahead, back knee down. If you want to put a twist on the end for your core, you can, so down, twist. So you twist over your lead leg, twist, back to the middle. Again, down, twist, over that lead leg, back up, down, over that lead leg. Or if you just want to do straight lunges, so down, back up. Always control the movement. And do it if you can. Uh, 10 on each leg. All right, so the next one we'll do is core. So I'll show you the correct way to do a sit-up. Because a lot of people do sit-ups and they're not doing them correctly. So the correct way to do a sit-up, you basically lay on the floor, show you, knees up, down, arch your back into the air, so you get a big arch here, push it really down, flat, arch your back, push it down really flat on it, and you want to get the midpoint, so not extreme there, not extreme there, Midpoint. Really squeeze your core, really squeeze it, arms here. Keep it squeezed so you keep your core squeezed, switched on all the time. So you don't let that core tension go constantly. And you'll find that after six or seven, it's already burning. So if you do six to eight reps, that's fine. If you want to do more, do more. But the key to a correct sit-up is to constantly have this core section tight. So when you, you lay back down, it's still solid. Your lower back's not flat on the ground. It's not really arched, it's in between, but that's really solid. And that's the correct way to do a sit-up. And that can really help with your back problems really really help because a lot of people with the back problems it's when they're switching on their outer abdomen which everybody thinks is your main muscle in your stomach it's not it's the internal muscles so they tend to switch them on first keep them switched on and switch on and off the internal ones it should be the other way around it should be the other way around so you have to relearn that uh, but yeah try that see how you get on um, and then we'll do a bit of light stretching. We'll do a bit of light stretching, but that's all you really need to do. You're at home. You can do these sort of exercises nearly every day, every other day if you want, you know. Uh, the dynamic stretching, that is actually, you are exercising. You are exercising. For some people, 
that will be a session in itself, you know. So um, the thing is, is just to keep moving, keep exercising, try these exercises. You like some, you might not like the others, and it's just trial and error. But while ever you're exercising, this is what I say to people, while ever you're exercising, you're already winning. You're already winning. You know, it's, it's one of the best deals you can get. Especially at times like these, it's the, one of the best stress relievers. relievers. Um, sleep better, you eat better. Uh, you tend to want to hydrate more. It's just, it's just a win-win. Win-win deal, best deal you'll ever get. So we'll go on to the stretches. Uh, I'll show you just some basic stretches now. Right, so this is, uh, is your thigh, which is your quadricep. I don't want to get too technical, but it's, it's your thigh muscle. So hold your ankle, hold your ankle, not your foot. So you're actually holding at your ankle and you want to hold it for 20 seconds each leg. 20 seconds each leg, which is maintenance stretching. It's not developmental, it's maintenance. But for some of you, it will increase your supplements. Right, this across the chest stretch, it'll do, it'll do like your lats. Uh, it does your triceps slightly, your shoulders slightly. And same again, you just hold that for 20 seconds each. 20 seconds each. This is a lat and a tricep one as well, so you just let your arm fall down your spine um, and just pull your elbow in. So all that, the thing with stretching, it should never really be discomfort. Really, you should tingle, slight discomfort only. If you're feeling pain or anything, you're doing it too much, it's you're overstretching, you don't need to. You don't need to. So always, always there on, on the, the side of caution. Yeah. So same again, 20 on each, each hold. Um, this is hamstring, so you keep your front leg straight. Um, and you'll stretch that hamstring by bending your opposite leg. Uh, same again, keep your core tight. So front leg pretty straight, your back leg slightly bent, and lean forward. Uh, the, the thing with stretching as well, get into a position where you can feel it stretching. Hold, then relax, then relax. Right, this is for your groin, and groin area, so you get down into like a very, very wide low squat position. Put your elbows inside your legs and you use your elbows to push out so you'll feel that groin stretch. So that's like, 20 seconds, again all of them 20 seconds, this is for your calf, so tighten your core, step back, put your heel to the floor, hold that, alternate your leg, put your heel to the floor, hold that for 20 seconds, and that's for your calves. So you're coming much closer, about a foot and a half, two feet away from the wall, stand on one leg, let gravity just take you straight down and you feel this, your Achilles tendon which runs up the back of your leg, uh, your lower leg. So it's a difficult one to stretch, but if you do it, if you do it close to the wall, let gravity just take you down, it will, it will stretch it. Yeah, same again, 20, 20 on each. Right everybody, I think that's it for now. It's not comprehensive, it's just a few little things that I've put together that may interest you, they may help you. It's something to try and see how you get on, see how you get on. Um, in the future, I will do much more comprehensive, much more detailed training programs. Um, I'm looking at traveling the world and showing people how to use uh, their environment and basically use what God gave us because we don't necessarily need all these gyms. We don't really need, if you're not training for an Olympics or top level sports or anything, you can get away without a gym membership. You can do everything outdoors. So this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to show everyone how to, how to use uh, their environment. I mean, recently I was in the Philippines, um, Tagaytay, where the, the tall volcano was that erupted, that erupted. I was hiking around the volcano uh, using papaya for weights and training while I was hiking. There's so many things you can do. There's so many, and I would like to travel the world and show people. So in the future, this is the sort of thing that I'm going to be doing. Just right now, I just thought I'd just start off. This is actually my first video. It's my first one. And I just thought I'd start off uh, and just maybe help help some of you. Just help while we're all in isolation, while we're all stuck, you know. And uh, hopefully it's not going to last long. Um, I'm hopeful, very hopeful. 
I'm an eternal optimist, so uh, I always try and look at the positive things, positive sides, and I'm sure it'll all pass. I'm sure it will all pass. Um, but yeah, this is my first video. Um, obviously, it will be very amateurish, of course, of course, but I will endeavour to get better. I've just started using an editing suite. Um, so yeah, if you'll bear with me, and I hope you're not too bored, <laughs> and hopefully, this might give you something just to uh, just to get into exercise if you've never done it before, or if you have, if you are into it, just something maybe different. I might have uh, come up with some points that you might not have heard before, or you know. So hopefully, hopefully, it has a positive effect, and uh, yeah, I will uh, I will endeavour to make another video pretty soon, and hopefully, I'll uh, I'll see you all soon. Okay, so thank you. See you later. Bye bye.